Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in today. Today, we will be speaking to you about the Arizona Department of Health Services program known as the Sunwise Skin Cancer Prevention Program. The Sunwise program was established in the state of Arizona in 2003 and focuses on teaching sun safe behaviors as well as skin cancer prevention. In other words, we will be speaking today about how to remain safe while spending time out in the sun in hopes that practicing these actions will prevent you and loved ones from ever developing skin cancer. Without further ado, let's get started. The objectives we will be covering are understanding risks, taking protective steps, and educating others. First, we must understand the risk of overexposure to the sun. What can be dangerous about being in the sun for too long? And why is this important? Second, what are the steps that we can take to make sure that we are protecting ourselves as much as possible from harmful UV rays? And finally, how can we educate others and spread the very important message of sun safety with friends, family, and others as well. So why is sun safety important anyway? Arizona is a place with beautiful landscapes and ideal weather. Well, except maybe in the summers when temperatures can reach well above 100 degrees. Although sun safety is important everywhere, in Arizona, the climate reflects a long summer in many parts of the state. Despite being related, the temperature and the amount of sunshine we receive are not exactly the same thing. Even when the temperature cools down, the state remains fairly sunny year-round. Arizona hosts three of the top five sunniest cities in all of the United States. They are Yuma, Phoenix, and Tucson. According to the National Climactic Data Center, Yuma averages about 329 days of sunshine per year, which works out to be about 90% of the year, securing Yuma the top spot for sunniest city in the U.S. Phoenix and Tucson aren't far behind, though, averaging 292 days of sunshine per year, or 85% of the year. As a whole, Arizona averages over 300 days of sunshine per year statewide. That's a lot of sunshine. There are both short and long-term effects of UV exposure. Sunburns can be uncomfortable and even painful. Over a person's lifetime, recurring and severe sunburns can lead to a significantly increased risk for skin cancer. Other negative effects of overexposure to UV rays are aging skin, a weakened immune system, and eye damage which could lead to cataracts. You may be asking yourself, what exactly is skin cancer anyway? Well, to put it simply, we are all made up of many cells. Many, many cells. Cancer is a disease in which cells in the body grow completely out of control. Cancer can occur in several different parts of our bodies. Skin cancer occurs when the bad cells in our skin begin to multiply uncontrollably. The three major types of skin cancer are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. For the most part, these cancers get their name from where they develop. For example, basal cell carcinoma develops in the basal cells, and melanoma develops in the melanocytes. Oh, and by the way, basal, squamous, and melanocytes, those are all types of cells found in our skin. There are also less common types of skin cancer, but we'll stick to talking about these today. And this, well, this is what your skin looks like. I mean, maybe not literally, but this is a pretty accurate model of what normal, healthy skin looks like if it were very, very zoomed in. Here you can see the basal cells, the squamous cells, and the melanocytes. You can also see the three layers of skin being 
the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. There are some other details in this model, such as glands and hair follicles, that are there to give you a better picture of where things are. Now let's talk about skin burns. Overexposure to the sun can cause the same damage that a heat burn can cause. A first degree burn results in damage to the epidermis or first layer of the skin, making skin appear red, irritated, and inflamed. Second degree burns damage both the epidermis and the dermis, or first and second layers of skin. Second degree burns can result in thickening of the skin and painful blisters, putting you at higher risk for a potential infection. Second degree burns can even cause severe damage to nerve endings. A third degree burn implies damage throughout all layers of the skin, even removing the first or second layers of the skin. Skin may appear red or purplish in color and would almost certainly require some degree of medical attention. These burns would also result in damage to the third layer of skin or subcutaneous layer. A first degree sunburn is most common and may be the type of sunburn that you have personally experienced. If perhaps you are a person who doesn't burn easily and typically tans, remember that even a slight tan is evidence of skin damage. Did you know that skin burns can occur in as little as 15 minutes when you're exposed to UV rays? In addition to skin burns, there are also other negative effects that can occur as a result of overexposure to the sun's UV rays. UV rays can cause premature aging of the skin by damaging something called elastin in our skin. Elastin is the tissue that makes your skin bounce back after being stretched out. Destroying elastin causes the skin to appear loose and saggy. So if you want to keep your skin looking young and fresh, protect it. Excessive exposure to UV rays could result in severe damage to the eye, especially after prolonged exposure. It could cause a weakened immune system, which could be particularly dangerous for people who already have a compromised immune system. The suppression of the immune system may also weaken body functioning. Arguably, the most severe consequence of overexposure to the sun's UV rays is the development of skin cancer, of which there are melanoma and non-melanoma types. As previously mentioned, increasing the frequency and intensity of skin burns in one's lifetime puts one at an increased risk for developing skin cancer. Skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the United States, and according to the American Cancer Society, 5.4 million basal and squamous cell skin cancers are diagnosed each year in the U.S. An article in the Journal of American Medicine entitled Sun Exposure, Sun Protection, and Vitamin D cites that one in five Americans is likely to develop skin cancer in their lifetime. These are all frightening statistics, but don't despair. Skin cancer is easily preventable. These sun safety tips are sure to keep you and your loved ones safe from harmful UV rays on a daily basis, which should hopefully keep you from experiencing negative health effects as a result of overexposure to UV rays. We will talk more about these in more detail. Practicing one of these is a great start to begin your sun safety practice, but the more tips you use on a daily basis, the more protected you will be. Before you know it, these measures will become second nature, and your sun safety behavior will become a habit that will serve you well for years to come. Our sun safety tips include using sunscreen every day, wearing a hat and lip balm, wearing sunglasses, covering up, limiting time in the midday sun, seeking shade, checking the daily UV index, and avoiding sun lamps and tanning booths. Selecting sunscreen can prove to be an overwhelming task since there are so many options and so many brands. When examining the packaging of the sunscreen, 
you should select a bottle that is labeled broad spectrum. This ensures that the sunscreen will protect you from UVA and UVB rays, both of which can be damaging to the skin. Also, check the SPF level on the container. SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. The SPF on your bottle should read 15 or higher. Sunscreen with SPF 15 blocks approximately 93% of UV rays. The SPF number does not correspond to time. For example, SPF 30 does not mean that you are protected for 30 minutes or 30 hours. Instead, this is a reference to how long it will take your skin to burn or tan compared to when your skin is not protected at all. If you are wearing sunscreen that is SPF 30, in theory it would take your skin 30 times longer for your skin to tan or burn. It is true that there are some people who have skin allergies to certain sunscreens. If you are someone who has experienced a skin allergy, try a small skin test with a different kind of sunscreen. Note the active ingredients on the back of the bottle. People who have allergies to benzophenones may do better with a metal-based sunscreen with zinc oxide. Not all sunscreens are the same, so if you've had a bad reaction to one, try another. Perhaps the sunscreen that you had an allergy to just wasn't a good fit for you. Have you ever wondered how sunscreen works? Sunscreen works by absorbing, reflecting, or scattering sunlight. Let's pretend for a moment that you are a superhero and the harmful UV rays are the enemy. Sunscreen would be the equivalent of your suit of armor. It absorbs, reflects, or scatters sunlight before it comes in contact with your skin. There are some numbers to keep in mind when talking about time. After applying sunscreen, you should wait 20 minutes before you go outside in order to allow the sunscreen to activate on your skin. Applying sunscreen once in the morning or before you go outside isn't enough. Sunscreen should be reapplied at least every two hours, but if you're exercising heavily or swimming, make sure you're reapplying more often than that. If you are swimming outdoors or anticipate some heavy sweating, you should also be selecting a sunscreen that is water resistant. Remember that no sunscreen is completely waterproof, and so no sunscreen will protect you all day. Like many over-the-counter drugs, sunscreen also has an expiration date, typically expiring three years after the date of manufacture. That may seem like a long time, but looking at the expiration date at the time of purchase is advisable in case you're thinking that you'll be using that same bottle next season. Wearing a hat can be an awesome fashion statement, but that's not all it's good for. A hat can provide shade for areas of your face, ears, and neck, allowing for less sun exposure. Not all hats are created equal, however. When selecting a hat, we recommend wearing a hat with a wide brim. In fact, the wider the brim, the more shade it will probably provide. Material is also important when selecting a hat. A tightly woven fabric such as canvas with a wide brim works best to protect your skin from UV rays. Try to stay away from straw hats since they have tiny holes that can allow sunlight to shine through. Keeping our lips moisturized is important to avoid cracking and even blistering, but there's also another reason that lip balm is important. Lips are skin just like other parts of our face, arms, and legs, so it is important to protect them as well. Lip balm, like sunscreen, should have sun protection factor of at least 15. This will make sure that lips are not only moisturized, but protected from the sun as well. Much like a hat, sunglasses can be a great fashion accessory. These two are a great tool in your toolbox to help protect you from the sun. To begin, the skin around your eyes is especially sensitive. Wearing sunglasses will add an additional protective layer for that sensitive skin. As mentioned before, prolonged exposure over a person's lifetime to UV rays can lead to cataracts and even cancer in the eye. Hopefully the bright sun and the need to squint will serve as a reminder of this tip. 
Have you ever taken the time to look at the sticker that is often right on the lens? If you have, you might notice that there is often a UV notice on it. When selecting sunglasses, make sure that they block out at least 90% of UVA and UVB rays. You can't very well put sunscreen on your eyes, but sunglasses are the next best thing to protect them. Living in arid Arizona desert, the thought of covering up might sound a bit crazy, especially in the summer months. It can get hot. Flip-flops, tank tops, and shorts are a staple in most Arizonans' closets. Let's think about a scenario where we will be outside for several hours. Do you think that flip-flops would provide better protection or tennis shoes? Is a tank top a better option or long sleeve shirt? Are shorts or long pants safer? The answer to these questions is that covering up will protect you from the sun the most. So tennis shoes, long sleeves, and long pants would provide the best options. It can certainly be warm at times, and so overheating is a legitimate concern. Clothing items should fit loosely and comfortably in order to allow them to be breathable. Choose fabrics that are tightly knit or have a tight weave, since these will offer the best protection. Darker colors will provide optimal protection as well, as these tend to absorb more of the UV rays but still keep them off of your skin. Limiting your time in the midday sun is something that you may want to do anyways during summer months because of the heat. Year round, however, the midday sun is when the UV rays are the strongest. The sun is highest in the sky and may cause the most damage. Skin cancer, although common, is considered to be preventable. The most preventable risk factor for skin cancer is overexposure to UV rays. Because of this, it would make sense to stay out of the sun when the UV rays are strongest, typically between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. You may still need to be out in the sun for various reasons, but if you foresee having to do chores outdoors or if you are planning outdoor activities, make an effort to schedule these tasks early in the morning before 10 a.m., or late afternoon or evening after 4 p.m. Seeking shade is incredibly important at times when sun rays are strongest, but in general, shade will provide a good amount of protection from UV rays. Trees are a fantastic source of shade, and more and more often we are seeing various shade structures over common outdoor areas such as playgrounds. If you can't find a tree or canopy, or if you anticipate being mobile outdoors on a walk, consider bringing your shade with you. Umbrellas are often overlooked as simply keeping the rain off of our backs, but really, umbrellas are excellent as protection from the UV rays. Clouds can offer a form of temporary or artificial shade, but UV rays may still move through clouds and beat down on us. Remember that you can still get a sunburn on a cloudy day. Cloudy days can make it feel cooler out, which might make you forget about the harmful effects of the UV rays. It is sometimes on cloudy days that people can get a bad sunburn because of this. While in the shade, it is still possible to get some exposure to UV rays. UV rays can bounce off of surfaces such as pavement, concrete, and even snow. If possible, use sunscreen even when you anticipate that you will be in the shade outdoors. Do you think that your shadow can tell you anything about how strong the sun's UV rays are? The answer is yes, it can. The shadow rule says that if your shadow is taller than you are in the early morning and late afternoon, your UV exposure is likely to be lower. Conversely, if your shadow is shorter than you are around midday, you are being exposed to higher levels of UV radiation. Think about it in this sense. As the sun is rising or setting, it hits you at an angle, casting a longer shadow. But when the sun is directly above us, the shadow will be smallest. The shadow rule may not be the best indicator of UV rays on a cloudy day, but on a sunny day, it can be helpful to check your shadow. If you have no shadow or a short shadow, make sure to seek shade. Checking the UV index can prove to be very helpful when determining if and when you should be outside. 
The UV index is a scale that runs from 1 to 11 plus. The lower the number on the UV scale, the less the risk of sun damage. Likewise, the higher the UV index forecast, the greater the chance of damage. One should take special care whenever the UV index is 5 or higher. There is a UV forecast much like a weather forecast. This can be typically checked on the EPA website at www.epa.gov or through the National Weather Service website. Today there are also a number of apps that can predict this for you as well. Use the UV forecast to plan your day, scheduling outdoor activities for times of the day when the UV rays will not be as strong. Consider taking recess indoors or planning indoor activities when UV rays are greater than 5. The practice of using sun lamps, tanning booths, or exposing yourself to artificial UV light can be a dangerous one. Remember that a tan is a sign of sun damage, not of health. A tanning booth or sun lamp can concentrate harmful UV rays, exposing us to 12 or more times the amount of harmful UV rays we'd get just from being outdoors on a sunny day. This would put you at an even greater risk for skin cancer and other negative health effects. As a general rule of thumb, it's a good idea to stay hydrated. If you are planning to be out in the sun for extended periods of time, Staying hydrated can mean the difference between staying safe and having a heat-related emergency. If you will be out in the sun, it is important to drink lots of water even if you do not think you are thirsty. Make sure to drink lots of water before, during, and after outdoor activity. If you are feeling weak, dizzy, or sick, tell someone right away. To recap our sun safety tips, remember to use sunscreen every day with SPF 15 or higher, wear a hat and lip balm with SPF 15 or higher, wear sunglasses that block at least 90% of UV rays, cover up with tightly knit fabrics or tightly woven fabrics, Limit your time in the midday sun between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Seeking shade. Check the daily UV index. And avoid sun lamps and tanning booths. Also remember that you can check your shadow and stay hydrated at all times. All of these tips may seem like a lot, but with some practice, you won't think twice about keeping your skin protected you'll be glad you develop these safe habits. The Arizona Department of Health Services SunWise Skin Cancer Prevention Program promotes sun safety and skin cancer prevention through various outreach efforts. SunWise attends community events and health fairs in addition to building strong partnerships with several organizations throughout the state of Arizona. The SunWise Skin Cancer Prevention Program also fulfills requests to attend school assemblies and provide presentations to youth with the hopes of instilling healthy habits. These are some of the SunWise efforts, but remember that education starts with you. Educating someone doesn't have to be in a school or classroom setting. Our hope is that you can take some of these tips and incorporate them into your routine on a daily basis. Sit and make a plan with your family and start small, with maybe just sunscreen, and then build from there. It all starts with a conversation. Thank you for your time and attention today. We hope we've equipped you with enough information and motivation to help you along in your journey to becoming SunWise. For questions, more information, or to request a SunWise presentation, please contact the SunWise Skin Cancer Prevention Program by phone at 602-364-4390 or by email at sunwise at azdhs.gov. You can also check out the SunWise website at www.azdhs.gov forward slash phs 
forward slash sunwise. Thanks again.